My friends, I welcome you to Mount Sinai Congregational Church. We are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. We thank you for joining us for worship this day. We trust you find being with us to uplift your spirits, to help you with whatever it is you're facing, to remind you again that God's love is with you. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. Welcome to worship. Let us pray. Holy One, be with us in the sacred space. Stir your spirit in and among us as we offer our prayers and praises. We long to hear more than the groaning of creation around us, more than our own fearful groaning. From the places deep within us that we mistakenly believe are hidden from you, may your spirit intercede for us. Draw us into your presence. May we recognize you in ourselves and in our neighbors. Let us see you through all brokenness that we may find wholeness in being your body here and now. In the name of the one who fills the world with hope. Amen. <laughs> of brokenness in every wilderness God has seen us through times when our strength was gone somehow we carried on God has seen us through look behind and see throughout history God has never let us down. Lean ahead and trust. God is guiding us. God is with us here right now. God will see me through. God will see you through. God will see us through somehow. Step by step, we'll be given all we need. God will see us through this now. In times of brokenness, in every wilderness, God has seen us through times when our strength was gone somehow we carried on God has seen us through look behind and see throughout history God has never let us down lean ahead trust God is guiding us God is with us here right now God will see me through God will see you through God will see us through somehow step by step we'll be given all we need God will see now. God will see me through. God will see you through. God will see us through somehow. Step by step, we'll be given all we need. God will see us through this now. God will see us
Good morning, church family, and welcome Sunday School children. Reverend Bell said, Easter is a season. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, which means we have three more to go. Today's cry for the children is a little umbrella and spring is here with some fun flowers. I'll leave you with this little saying. It's a play on words. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. A reading from Luke chapter 24, verses 36 to 48. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet, and while they still did not believe it because of joy and excitement, he asked them, Do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Let us pray. Gracious God, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Let your word dwell within us. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Grace and peace to you this morning. Grace and peace. The astute church nerds among you might have noticed that this week on the church calendar is Good Shepherd Sunday. When they do the readings from John about the Good Shepherd and we do the 23rd Psalm and we actually did those last week. The reason for that is I made a mistake and I misdid our worship plan and I didn't catch it until it was too late to put everything in a different order and everything else. So one of the things that's a joy of being a minister is I get to make my mistakes publicly. And now with the joy of YouTube, they are saved in perpetuity. But I'm reminded of the wisdom of a colleague of mine, Reverend Holly Jackson of the United Church of Christ of Seneca Valley in Maryland. She says, what the church is about is what we do on our best days. What she means by that is we say that we feed the hungry and we help the poor and we care for those in need and we practice being good news and we do all of these things, but we, that's what we do on our best days. And what about our not best days? Well, for those we ask forgiveness. And we seek to try again. We seek to learn from them and do better. So on our best days, we are the church. And our not best days, we seek to be the church. When Jesus shows up in our story, the disciples are in the midst of talking about something. They're busy discussing something. And the thing they're discussing is two of the disciples, two of Jesus' followers, had run, had gone back to Emmaus. They were headed that way, and they were trying to get out of Dodge. They were trying to leave Jerusalem. They were scared of what happened in the crucifixion. And just as so many of the disciples had been locked away in the upper room, out of fear, these two ran out of fear. And Jesus shows up 
but they don't know it's him. Something about these resurrection appearances where people don't recognize Jesus. He shows up and he walks with them and asks about what's been going on. And they explain, how do you not know what's been going on? Everyone knows what happened in Jerusalem. And he talks to them about scripture and he explains the meaning of all of this. And they stop for the night and they ask Jesus, will you stop with us? He was going to keep going. They say, stop with us. And he stops with them. And in the meal, because you have the evening meal after you've stopped traveling, and he takes the bread. And this sounds familiar. He takes the bread and he blesses it. He gives thanks to God for it and he breaks it and he gives it to them. And it says, and in the breaking of the bread, he was made known to them. We'll come back to that. In the breaking of the bread, he was made known to them. And they go back to Jerusalem. They run back and they're telling the disciples what they've seen, what they've heard. They saw Jesus. And Luke has some interesting special effects. Jesus disappears after they recognize him. And while they're wondering about this and talking about this and trying to figure it out, Jesus shows up where they are. And the first thing he says is, okay, this is the audience participation portion of the sermon. You know how Jesus starts these conversations. The same way the angels start conversations in the New Testament. Peace be with you. And they are completely dumbfounded. They don't understand. They don't recognize him. And then he shows them his hands and his feet. And now they recognize that it's Jesus. They're so overjoyed in wonderment, they don't know what all this means. But he shows them the wounds. He shows them the wounds still on his hands from the crucifixion. The wounds still on his feet. It's not in the bread that those disciples recognized Jesus. It was in the breaking of the bread that he was made known to them. It was not in his face, in his body, in his hair that Jesus was known to the disciples after the resurrection. They didn't know who he was. No, it was in his hands and his feet. I wonder how many times we discover our people because we have the same wounds they have. How many times do we discover our people because their wounds look like our wounds? When parents encounter the hard blessing of raising a lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or queer child in a world that is so terribly bigoted and judgmental, when a parent like that finds a group like Rainbow Roots, and discovers they are not alone, that other parents have wrestled with this. Other parents have struggled with school districts that do not comply with state law, that do not handle it well. When other parents have dealt with family who wants to disown family because of who they are, when they discover each other's woundedness and need for support, they recognize these are my people. When my wife or I have written about or spoken about infertility or loss of pregnancy or loss of a child, we discover again and again that telling the truth about what is a terrible wound to the body, to the soul, to the relationship, telling the truth about that frees people up to tell the truth about their experience of it. 
it allows people room to talk about it, maybe for the first time. Years ago, I served in Michigan, and we had a building next door to the church. It was an old Bell Telephone building. And in it was housed part of the alternative education high school, meaning these are the kids who couldn't get along or had enough learning differences that the school district didn't know what to do with or were troublemakers. And so they had a special place they went for high school. And we housed part of it in this building. And one night the window got broken. I don't think it was the kids from the program. I think it was neighborhood kids who did it. But that doesn't matter. One of our church members, an older gentleman, went next door and he said, can I borrow a couple of your kids? And the teacher said, sure, because we had talked with them beforehand. And the member went over and borrowed these kids and taught them how to fix a window. Taught them how to pull glass safely, how to scrape putty out of the window frame, how to put new glass in and, and put the putty around it. And a couple of things were done with such wisdom. The first is he didn't clean up their putty job. He didn't make it look smooth and professional. He could have. He didn't. Their thumbprints were still in that putty, which means every time they were in that room, they knew which pane of glass was theirs, which part of that window they had fixed. The second part of the wisdom was we started working with the kids. These are kids who are going to be out on their own if they weren't already out on their own too early in life. These were going to be kids who had to deal with being a grown-up without necessarily having the tools. So adults from the church taught them budgeting, how to cook meals that were cheap, but also had vegetables in them and were nutritious, how to balance a checkbook, how to sew so they could repair clothes or learn to make things to give away. They made lap robes and they made those bags that go on the back of wheelchairs. And they taught them all sorts of things, but the trick was it wasn't about the teaching. That was important. We called it Real Life 101. We wanted them to learn real life skills that would help them. But what we really wanted to do was to get adults in their lives. That was the whole purpose. Get adults into their lives who would listen to them. Because when kids are learning to weave a rug, or cook a meal, or sew something, they talk. And they talk about what bothers them, and they talk about all this other stuff, because you're not looking at them asking about themselves. You're looking the same way they are and working on something, and that makes it easier. We've learned over the past several years that the way that terrorist groups and white supremacists radicalize people is they find them, find out how they're hurting, and they lean on those hurts. They find people who are lonely, disaffected, wounded, cursed by family, and they lean into it and then offer an alternative. And we've also learned that being cursed by a family, all it takes is not being blessed by the family. We also know that some people play a game of one-upsmanship when it comes to being hurt, being wounded, being in pain. Oh, you think that's bad. Oh, wait till you hear what I've got going on. Some people seem to collect these things and they use them to bring everybody down. But what if instead of leaning on the hurt, to manipulate someone into our agenda, what if instead of collecting hurts and trying to use them for some kind of social leverage, what if instead 
we recognize Jesus in the wounds? What if instead we looked for Christ in the brokenness? What if instead of hearing someone's pain, trying to outdo it, one-up it, or manipulate it, what if we listened as best we are able? What if we listened the way we imagined Jesus would listen? When we are in pain, don't we long for someone to listen to us the way we imagine Jesus listening? What if we did that? What if we recognize one another's woundedness, recognize the broken places of life, but instead of trying to use them or manipulate them, or what if we use that to grow compassion? What if the truth-telling allowed us to build upon each other's strengths? to build upon each other's recognition that this part is broken, but God is with us in the midst of it. We are not alone. God is there and other people are there and they know what it's like too, even if they don't know all the details. Your grief is yours. I cannot claim to understand any part of it, but I have been through grief and I can recognize it. And maybe together we can build one another up or make room for others who have grieved as well. You know, I, I, I feel funny asking these questions because I'm not sure I need to. I'm not sure I need to because I've seen you do this. I've seen so many people do this that... I recognize this hurt. I've been through it myself, and I'm trying to be there for them. Not to fix anyone, because here's the secret, folks. I can't fix you. You can't fix me. I got enough trouble working on myself. But we can walk together. We can let those places where we know brokenness, call us to compassion. It's not about having all the answers. Sometimes that keeps us from reaching out. Sometimes that keeps us from being compassionate. I I don't have the answers. Well, guess what? Neither do I. Sometimes we don't get the answers this side of the kingdom. It's about being present with one another. Reminding each other that you're loved. Reminding each other that we are not defined by our worst days. Just as the church doesn't always live up to its best days, we are not defined by the worst thing that has happened to us. We are not defined by the worst thing we have done. It's about making room for more compassion for one another and for ourselves. In the breaking of the bread, Jesus was made known to them. In the wounds, they recognized the risen Jesus in their midst. Just so. Thanks be to God. Amen.
My friends, let us pray. God, both gracious and holy, we gather where we are. You meet us where we are. We read that there is nowhere we could go that your spirit would not already be there. Were we to go to the highest of mountains, yet you are there. Were we to descend to the bottom of the pit, to the valley of dry bones, to the valley of the shadow of death, your spirit would already be there. You are with us in our wholeness and on our best days, and in our woundedness, our brokenness, on our worst days. You are with us when we have the world on a string. We've got it by the tail. We know everything that's going on, and we are in charge. You are with us when we realize the illusion of our control, when we surrender to the fact that maybe the best we can hope for is to seek to do your will. Gracious God, in the midst of this pandemic, in the face of a racist nation, in a world that worships violence, help us to be your people. Help us to love one another as you love us. Help us to love ourselves as you love us. Lord, some days it's hard to know which is tougher, loving neighbor or loving self, yet you call us to love our neighbor as ourself, which means we have to love both. And when we fall short, Lord, not if we fall short, but when we fall short, Lord, you are there with us. And your love covers all our deficiencies, all our deficits, all our areas that we can't love yet. Remind us of your love. Make it known to us here at table in the breaking of the bread, but also every day of our lives. Lord, the world needs your love and it needs us to be bearers of your love. So give us more than we need. Let it overflow. Let it spill out onto all the world. This we pray in Jesus' name as we join our voices together in the prayer that he taught using the words on the screen or those closest to our hearts. The prayer that begins, Our Creator who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
first we vow to bless It's time for action now Move, do not be silent Silent move, let anger bring change. No one is an island. Move, things just can't stay the same. Move, do not be silent. Move, let anger bring change. No one is an island. Move, things can't stay. My friends, we gather at table, wherever that table may be. We've had requests that on May 16th, when we gather in person, that we continue with communion each Sunday. That would be the gathering outdoors with distance, with masks. We're looking into it. We're looking into what are the safest ways to do this? How best can we do this for the whole community? So we have heard your request. We are taking it seriously and we want to see what is possible. But where you are right now, you are in communion with God and with the church and with one another. And we celebrate that, we remember that, we memorialize that, we make it so we can't forget that when we gather here at table with bread and with cup. And what we do here is about the world. It's about us and our individual connection with God, but it is also about the world. That we look for a day when sharing by all means scarcity for none. We look for a day when God's abundance is not treated as a commodity, but as a shared gift. When we don't build walls, we build longer tables. And so we come here as we are, whatever our brokenness, whatever our wounds, whatever has held us back, whatever we are facing, we come here in the midst of all that we are in the midst of. And we gather here and we remember on the hillside with the crowds, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And in the upper room, the night he was betrayed, he took the bread and he gave thanks to God. He blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them. And on the road to Emmaus, when they stopped, he took the bread, gave thanks to God, and he broke it. And he gave it to them. And in the breaking of the bread, he was made known to them. In like manner, in that upper room, after the supper, he poured the cup. He gave thanks to God and he gave it to them, saying, drink from this, all of you. For this is his body given for us. This is the cup of the new covenant, the cup of salvation poured out for us, for you and for me and for the world. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we come to this table just as we are, however we are this day. 
And we gather with all those at this table this day, in person or apart. And we are gathered by your Holy Spirit. We ask that Holy Spirit to make of these simple gifts the realization of your presence in our midst. Make of these simple gifts the reality of your love for all. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Be with us here. In your name we pray. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. Do not forget the love of God. Take and eat. Amen. The cup of the new covenant poured out for you that you would not forget the communion with God and the church and one another in the Holy Spirit. Take and drink. Let us pray. Gracious God, in these simple gifts of bread and cup, make known to us again the reality of your presence in our lives. Make known to us again the love that you have for us and for all creation, that we would carry that love with us, within us, around us, that we would offer it to all whom we meet, that a wound or a broken place in life would not be a source of shame but a place of healing and compassion, of love and community, that we would never be ashamed, that we would never shame another. Bless us to have more best days, that we would be your people. And help us know you are with us whatever day it is. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
people of God, receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May God's countenance be lifted up upon you. May you always know God's peace. Amen and amen. Go in peace. of brokenness in every wilderness God has seen us through times when our strength was gone somehow we carried on God has seen us through look behind and see throughout history God has never let us down. Lean ahead and trust. God is guiding us. God is with us here right now. God will see me through. God will see you through. God will see us through somehow. Step by step, we'll be given all we need. God will see us through this now. In times of brokenness, in every wilderness, God has seen us through times when our strength was gone somehow we carried on God has seen us through look behind and see throughout history God has never let us down lean ahead trust. God is guiding us. God is with us here right now. God will see me through. God will see you through. God will see us through somehow. Step by step, we'll be given all we need. God will see now. God will see me through. God will see you through. God will see us through somehow. Step by step, we'll be given all we need. God will see us through this now. God will see us